Hi guys, this is Julia. And this is Helen. And welcome to our podcast today. We're gonna to spend the next few minutes examining gender inequality throughout Latin America, and then more specifically looking at El Salvador. The issue of gender inequality has persisted in both Latin America and El Salvador for decades, but has experienced much greater setbacks due to COVID-19, especially in the field of women's health and their reproductive rights, which we're gonna look at specifically today. So I did wanna start off by looking at a pretty sh shocking statistic I found. It really gives perspective on the severity of gender inequality in El Salvador. El Salvador is one of only four countries in the world where female suicide rates are higher than that of males. On top of that, suicide is the second most prevalent cause of death for females between the ages of 10 and 19 in this country. And this is the cause of 57% of deaths for girls in this age demographic. These statistics are definitely heartbreaking in themselves, but they also depict the extreme gender inequality and mistreatment of women in El Salvador. The country is an anomaly on this issue and experts have credited much of the reason for these high suicide rates, traced back to extremely limited access to abortion, high rates of rape and domestic violence against women, coupled with authorities being little to no help when women are faced with sexual violence. So Helen, we've seen progress being made in other Latin American countries, most recently in Argentina on the issue of abortion. Do you foresee El Salvador's abortion policies remaining so strict? Mm, well, Julia, um, that question is very complicated because El Salvador's laws are one of the strictest laws in Latin America. And there are so many reasons why, um, well, first off, in El Salvador, there's no exceptions for getting an abortion, even in situations where the mother has health complications or if the mother was sexually abused. And there are only four other countries that completely ban abortion in Latin America. And those countries are Haiti, Dominican Republic, Honduras, and Suriname. El Salvador and the rest of Central America are known to be patriarchal. The intensity of patriarchy is so harsh which explains the statistics um, that you gave about suicide rates between gender, um, which are higher within women. According to Rutgers, the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, he's a conservative leader who says that women should not get an abortion unless there are health complications for the women. His views and actions don't help the issue in El Salvador at all, especially during the pandemic that we're facing today. When President Bukele initiated a strict lockdown for the people in El Salvador during the uh, uh, COVID outbreak, there were numerous women that were stuck in their abusive, um, like in their households with abusive family members. And some as young as 10 years old were raped during the quarantine. And there aren't any relief plans to help these women and young girls there are only consequences if they try to get help or abortions. If they try to get an abortion, they will get prosecute, um, persecuted harshly. There are countless of cases, countless numbers of cases um, of women that have been charged for attempted murder and sentenced for more than 10 years in prison. One case in particular that was actually an outlier compared to the other cases was the story of Imelda Cortez. This case happened before the pandemic, but it's still relevant because the laws haven't changed in the, since that happened. So Imelda Cortez was raped by her stepfather and ended up getting pregnant. When she had the baby, she experienced abnormal bleeding and so she went to the hospital. What had happened was a doctor saw that she was um, bleeding abnormally and assumed that she had an abortion. So he turned her in um, she was arrested and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Even after the police found the baby safe and sound at Emela's home, investigators still found ways to persecute her. And these laws are dangerous because they increase the patriarchal behavior. You can see like from the doctors and the police and the judges that are sentencing um, these women, which are um, held, these positions are held by men. And Cortez was also denied from psychological support and to see her baby. She was also accused of making up the story that she was raped until they found out um, through a paternity test that he was the actual father. But even that, after that, um, the stepfather was just detained and he wasn't charged for any crime, but it did prove her innocence um, and she got free. Um, 
it doesn't seem like strict abortion laws will be lessened due to the deep-rooted patriarchy in several aspects, such as the system, situations, and history. The only way there can be change is uh, community organizing for women, holding men accountable to their actions. But other than looking at this issue in El Salvador, how can we understand the issue of women reproductive health rights in Latin America? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good question. And I think it is important to look at Latin America as a whole so that we can really interpret the severity of gender inequality in El Salvador. So a UNICEF report, which was published in September of this year, details the numerous ways that women's reproductive health has been compromised due to COVID-19. The report shows women's reported limited access to critical health care services, such as STD tests and vaccinations, contraceptives, feminine hygiene products, breast milk alternatives, as well as necessary appointments at women's health clinics. These limitations have led to even harsher consequences for the women of El Salvador. Compared to 2019, the country has experienced a 70% increase in women reporting domestic abuse in their home environments. And also due to lockdown and quarantine orders, it's so much harder for women to leave their households to access the care they need, not only keeping many women in abusive and toxic households. However, there are efforts that are being made to fight gender inequality in El Salvador. The UN Women's Organization has distributed dignity kits to women in prison and quarantine throughout the country that are filled with feminine hygiene products, such as menstrual, menstrual pads and soaps. Additionally, the Salvadoran government has launched a national telemedicine service with one of its top priorities being to serve pregnant and postpartum women. Through this service, women are able to speak directly with therapists, psychiatrists, doctors, and gynecologists in order to help them in whatever they will, that way they may need in this virtual environment. So there is progress that is being made, but as you can see, El Salvador is certainly an outlier in the region of Latin America in the ways of this extreme gender inequality gap for women. So through this podcast, we hope that you did learn something and that it gave you a little bit more insight on how serious of an issue gender inequality is in El Salvador and some steps that maybe can be done to resolve the issue.